Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the retail and e-commerce track. Uh, for our next session, we'll, the, the, our next session is entitled 3D to benefit the brand and the consumer. And our speaker this morning is Ashley Crowder, the co-founder and CEO of Ventana. Uh, she's going to talk about the creation, management and distribution of 3D assets across the web, AR and VR for both brands and consumers. Before we get started, just some quick housekeeping notes. We have Q&A available. We have some time after, a bit of time after Ashley's presentation. So feel free to text us your questions and we'll try to get to them. Uh, AWE would like to remind you to attend the Augie Awards, May 29th at 1150. And a reminder that this session is being recorded and will be available on an app. With that, I hand it over to Ashley. Over to you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, yes, I am Ashley Crowder. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ventana. We help make it easy to create 3D models for AR, VR, and web. Uh, and I'm here today to help explain how you can utilize 3D today to help benefit brands and consumers. I wanna start out with talking about a case study of Gary Vaynerchuk. He is a super successful entrepreneur who uh, really fascinates me because he's built his huge business around arbitraging undervalued platforms. He started back in 1998. He grew his family's wine business from 5 million to 60 million by leveraging these undervalued platforms, starting with email and AdWords. This is back in 1998 when everyone opened every single email because it was exciting to get one. And he actually bought the AdWord wine for five cents. And it took about a year for anyone to bid against him. So this is such a great strategy for and especially during these times where we're looking to save money, find these undervalued platforms that you can leverage to get more attention from your consumers. AR is definitely one of those undervalued platforms. This is a study done by Artillery Intelligence. So about a third of consumers have tried AR. Most people look at that and say, okay, well, if only a third of consumers have tried it, maybe it's not that important. But you gotta pay attention to the rest of this study. 73% of the people who did try it were very satisfied, they loved it. Um, only 10% of consumers have actually tried AR, VR for shopping, but 45% want to try it. People are begging for this content. And about a third of all consumers said if AR could provide what they need to make a good decision with purchase and fit, they would never go into a retail store again. People want this content. So let me walk through a few different ways that you can actually create some of this today. There's a few brands that have actually leveraged this already and seen massive increases. Shopify, having a 3D version of your product on your website has shown double conversion rates and actually reduced returns by 40%. This is a huge value to the bottom line. If you take that one step further, companies like House who've used AR to actually place furniture in your home have seen an 11X increase in conversions. And Ikea, who's been doing this for years, saw a 30% revenue jump once they started using 3D and AR. Their kitchen catalog is 100% 3D. Not a single photo was actually used for that. Everyone should be doing this, and there's platforms out there today that you can start leveraging. You don't have to start with building your custom app, which I know sounds like a huge time-consuming and expensive process. One is with Snap Camera. Um, they leverage this not just with Snapchat, but they actually have partnered with Zoom, Twitch, Google Hangouts, Skype, and more. So you actually can use these Snap lenses across all of these different platforms. So if you created one for your brand, people could have access to use it all over. Um, they, you also don't need to be a software developer to start creating these. You can download Lens Studio for free and they have templates that you can start from that make this pretty easy. You don't need to write a single line of code. Uh, if you are planning to incorporate a 3D version of your product, it does need to meet specific requirements. So it needs to be an FBX, OBJ, or GLTF file. Note that OBJ doesn't support animation. So you probably want to go with FBX or GLTF. Um, the maximum polygons is 5,000, and it does need to be triangulated, and meshes must have UV map and textures. Um, at Ventana, we help create all of these types of 3D models, so you can actually do 
all kinds of filters like these great sunglasses. So this is using snap lens on Zoom uh, and using our software to create these, this 3D file that was easy to drop in. Um, Facebook and Instagram AR is another awesome platform. And you can actually do this today for free. When you think about the cost of Instagram and Facebook ads, which continues to go up, if you create an AR filter, it's automatically accessible to all of your followers. And then you can also use that to create a story that can get more followers because they would have to like your page in order to have access to the filter. Um, so this is a great example that Coca-Cola created over the holiday season. We could actually have the bear in your home uh, or a fun selfie because people are still loving selfies. I don't think they're going away anytime soon. And all you need to do is link your Facebook and Instagram account. And this again can be a personal account or a business account. Um, and something to note for Facebook and Instagram, about a third of all stories watched are from businesses. So that's, that's a huge audience right there. Um, and these are all stats pre-quarantine. 67% um, of Instagram users are 18 to 29. So if you are a brand and you're targeting that group, again, this is a great platform for you. 50% um, of people say they discover new products on Instagram and I'm one of them when I'm procrastinating, that is how I shop. <laughs> and there's 200 million plus Instagrammers who visit at least one business profile daily. And there's been an 80% increase in time spent watching video on Instagram. And again, this is all pre-COVID. Um, the Future Party came out with an interesting study that post-COVID, people are coping with Instagram stories. The number of views jumped by 21% week over week in the middle of March. So people are wanting this content. And if you can create a fun, interactive filter for people to play with at home, you're going to get more followers and more shares. Uh, this is also really easy to do. So you can download Spark AR for free. Again, it's very, very similar to the Snap Studio Lens. They have all these built-in templates. You don't have to write a single line of code to start using this today. If you do want to import a 3D version of your own product, it must meet Facebook and Instagram's requirements. So they can take FBX, GLTF, and OBJ along with a few others, FBX and GLTF are probably the most standard, though as you're seeing, there is no standard for 3D right now. Um, your textures need to meet a certain size. It has to be under 50,000 polygons, so this can be bigger uh, than Snap. However, the total filter size is really recommended to be under two megabytes. So this is all things to be conscious of as you're looking at how to insert your product into these types of AR filters. Google Swirl is another amazing platform that people have not taken advantage of yet. You can actually advertise in 3D on Google today. Imagine how much more that would stand out than the million of pages of just text that pop up. Um, you can actually purchase a 3D asset in Google's Poly or use it to edit your 3D model. Or again, you can actually drop in a 3D version of your own product. Because let's be honest, New Balance wants New Balance's shoe. They don't want a random 3D shoe. Right. Uh, and so if you're doing this, Google Swirl actually has probably the most specific 3D requirements of all the different platforms. So again, GLTF, all of us are pushing for this to be more of the standard, but we can also accept OBJ and FBX. Um, their polygon count recommendation is 12,000, but there's no official max. Um, however, they have all these other restrictions for texture type, texture size, um, materials have to be PBR. Um, the total asset size does need to be under two megabytes. Um, you can only have a single UV set per mesh. Um, and there is a bones per vertex limit of four and, and, and more. So it is a little difficult to kind of squeeze your 3D asset into these, this Google requirement. It will take some work from a 3D artist or a Ventana. That's really what we're, we're trying to get rid of the need of. Um, and of course, Unity. Everyone at this conference knows and loves Unity. They're one of the world's number one game engines. 50% uh, of all new mobile games and 60% of all AR VR is built on Unity. Um, and all, if there's any developers out there, many of you use Unity to make money on advertising. Um, so today their ads get 1.1 billion views per month. Um, and they're just 2D ads right now, but they are working on being able to incorporate 3D. So you can imagine playing a game and having a 3D object pop up as an ad that you can play with and interact and maybe do virtual try on. Way more engaging than just watching a video. And then lastly, uh, 
separate from all the platforms, you know, you can do a lot more if you are incorporating this into a mobile AR app. This is an example of Nike uh, or Goat doing the virtual try-on, so holding your phone up and actually seeing those shoes on your feet. Um, unfortunately, web AR today cannot support this type of tracking technology, so it would have to be built into an app. Um, but it's definitely worth the, the money and time to do that if you're thinking about an 11x increase in conversions that house an IKEA saw from doing this type of virtual try-on. Um, in order to create this, you obviously do need 3D models of your products, and you it, Apple's always different. So for iOS, you need USDZ and USD files. Android, you need GLB or GLTF files. So this brings us to Kronos. Um, as you've heard, everyone has their own 3D file requirements and they're across the board and all over the place. Um, Kronos is a group that we're a part of and a lot of big companies are a part of because they're really pushing for standards for 3D, which is really exciting and, and GLTF is becoming one of them. The problem is every industry has their own 3D pipeline today. So it's gonna take a while to get everyone on the same page. If you're a retailer, you probably design in 3D using Clo, Optitex, or Browseware. If you're more industrial, like an auto company or anything sold at Home Depot, it's probably Autodesk, SolidWorks. Um, jewelry is usually done in Rhino. And then you have kind of the all-encompassing 3D design programs like Adobe Substance, Mayan, and 3ds Max. All of these export a variety of different 3D file formats. And this is something that we struggled with at Ventana really over the past eight years of working with Fortune 500 brands. No one had the right 3D file formats we needed to work with. So we ended up building software to help automate some of this process. So as you can see on the left, we have this patio furniture. It's a massive file. It's almost 8 million triangles and 200 megabytes. Um, that's way beyond any of the limits I just read through from Facebook, Snap, et cetera. Um, so what you can do is upload that to the Ventana platform. Um, it automatically optimizes it and converts it and immediately makes it usable across web and web AR. Um, so you can see the final file is 3.5 megabytes, about 2% of that original size, and only 100,000 triangles. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting there to being usable all across web, AR, and VR. Um, you can see the shoe, for example, after it's uploaded, it's automatically reduced in file size, and we just immediately create that iframe so you can simply copy and paste it to put it on your website with built-in augmented reality. So very much like Vimeo has done with videos, making it easy to post and share videos, Ventana is doing the same thing with 3D assets. Uh, and we're starting to create presets because, again, every single platform has their own requirements, which is just would cost weeks of 3D artist time and money to be able to re create exactly what's needed for each. Um, we're trying to help automate this and get rid of that pain in manual work for all these platforms to really make it easy for people to take advantage of this. Um, and it's all centralized in a cloud 3D content management system. Uh, we like to say the Marie Kondo of 3D, because before we had this system for ourselves, uh, we had assets saved in Dropbox and Google Drive, and, and it was a mess. So having them all centralized in the cloud with an API that you can pull from uh, just really helps global teams work faster and, and easier. And what I wanna leave you with is making sure that you have a cohesive 3D strategy because those are the companies that are gonna win. Anyone can create a one-off 3D AR app, but it's when you tie this and you start with design. So if you're a brand saying, I don't even know where to begin, ask the design and manufacturing department. They design in 3D today figure out what software they're using, what can I export, and then say, okay, how can I get this into the hands of my marketing e-commerce team so we can actually get this interacting with consumers on the web, using it for marketing to target and engage people because people are going to be that much more intrigued. It's proven to increase engagement by 25%. And then make sure it's all tied in with your ERP system because you can track data. We're working with SAP, for example, who gives the power of adding bill of materials and consumer engagement and a number of other data piece tracking that we can all tie to that 3D asset so that you can leverage this to increase revenue even more. So lastly, I'll leave you with something fun to try at home. Uh, so you can scan this QR code. It's an example of one of the 3D models we created with our software. You can play around, place it in your home, uh, and check it out. 
Um, thank you so much for having me. If you have uh, any questions, I'm happy to take those now. And then you can always email me at ashley at ventana.com uh, if you want to talk more. Thank you. Informative. Uh, can you tell us, there's just a general question on how ubiquitous are these types of use cases and applications that you're talking about? Is this something that's, um, you know, mass consumer yet, or, or, or are we years away from seeing like the average person using these applications? We are at the point of, of mass consumption and, and it's really going to take off in the next one to two years. Uh, we've, you know, the studies showing that people are two and a half times more likely to make a purchase seeing a 3D model. You have people like Ikea who've been doing this for, for almost four years. Their entire kitchen catalog is, is all 3D. Not a single photograph was taken. Um, so this is here today. Uh, and, and it's really exciting because people, especially now with COVID, are wanting more and more of this type of technology. Great. And a second question. Um, do you see these technologies helping to bridge um, e-commerce as well as physical in-store shopping? Or what do you think? Do you see any trends or any insights into how the two are coming together and how this type of technology is impacting that? Uh, transition or that convergence? Yeah, definitely. I mean, of course, right now, you know, we're in this this crazy situation where almost all retail is closed. So we only have online um, and being able to have a 3D version kind of gives those online shoppers a more physical type of, of shopping experience because they can physically see that product in their home or see it from all different angles. Um, you know, when stores do open back up, what I see being a huge benefit is not having to carry as much inventory. Maybe you have that one couch in one color, but you can use augmented reality to see it in every different fabric variant, um, which you know you might not be able to have that many options in the actual store. So I definitely see uh, you know AR online just kind of making it a more seamless you know omni-channel shopping experience, whether you're going into that store or you're on your phone or you're on your computer. Fantastic. Thanks for that. Okay, I think those are all the questions we have time for today. Thanks so much for your presentation. Great. Yeah, and if you guys still have questions, feel free to email me at ashley at ventana.com.